Welcome to my very short hobby vlog, where I will tell you a little bit about my current news, mostly about art supplies. First and the most interesting thing is that I purchased several new watercolor paints from Ukrainian manufacturer Rosa. I love Rosa watercolors and I use them quite frequently. Maybe you are familiar. They are available also on Amazon Rosa Gallery and I love their paints. They do acrylic paint, they do watercolor paints, they do gouache and I already collected a lot of their colors. That's my previous swatch and you can see that I mostly had very bright, clear, traditional colors. But this time they created series of more dark granulating watercolors. Granulating means that uh, when you put it on the paper it separates into several colors. Uh, sometimes it's black plus violet, black plus blue uh, or in violet you can more clearly see pink and blue color. So it separates in several colors, several pigments and it creates beautiful interesting stains by itself. You don't have to do anything, but honestly it works only on good paper, on thick and perfect and textured paper. Not so well in coloring books, but I still think that I needed those dark colors. Even without granulating, I love to do dark backgrounds. Uh, when black is too boring, too simple, but dark like black with addition of some color, it's definitely what I need. So I selected several from their new lines and now I want finally to test them on the paper and to put them into box. You can see that I purchased several in pens, but they were so popular <laughs> that Two colors I purchased only in tubes, they weren't available in pants. I am very happy that I can support Ukrainian manufacturer who, despite such a difficult time, still continue to do very high quality art supplies. And of course, I am already eager to test my new paints and to start using them. I already have a couple of books in mind where I plan to use these dark colors, I just need to swatch them. So, uh, let's start.
interesting paints first you think that it's something very dull not uh, very useful for your coloring but then after drying indeed they separate into interesting stains here we can clearly see golden and brown here we have this black green with a little bit of yellow this one it's indeed uh, blue with gray but also with a little bit of purple into it i deliberately did my swatch on this a very plain paper without granulate without texture to be able to understand how they would behave in coloring books on the plain paper and i think that i definitely will use all these colors all those muted pinks i do love them uh, with bigger amount of water these delicate shades I think that it will work very well for some backgrounds for the botanical compositions. And these dark colors I needed because I really want to start doing portraits in uh, Queens of Poland. And I want them mostly to have dark backgrounds. You know that old masters oil portraits when usually they do dark brown, dark gray, almost a black background. And I think that with this granulating dark paints, I will be able to do quick, easy and dark intense backgrounds. Also, I intend to try them in Dragons by Ravine Filan. Paper here is really good for watercolors and I think that such dark unusual colors will be quite matching to the style of fantasy dragon book. Also, maybe in Shakespeare on Escape series, uh, in those books which have nice watercolor paper. For the backgrounds in such style, these paints will be quite helpful. And also in another book by Ravin Filan, also on watercolor paper, that's my animal spirit. All these books, they are slightly abandoned by me. I hadn't touched those animals and dragons for years, so maybe that would be a nice push. You need to control water here because the most interesting stains they were created were a water gather. So with your brush you will be able to get interesting different gradients. And of course I will try to blend them and I think that blends will be even more interesting. I definitely want to blend this one with bright blue and also with violet it can be quite interesting this one with more uh, clear golden colors like my favorite queen acridon gold so i think that I, I will have a lot of fun by creating interesting blends so that was point number one in my hobby vlog Next, I put my pencil swatches in a better order. I finally got myself another folder. So here I have my most frequently used Prisma colors. And yes, I, even if I memorize all of them quite well, I still keep swatch here as my most frequently used. Here I have my Derwent Ink Tense together with Derwent Graffitins. Then I have Mitsubishi, I have Derwent Color Softs. I have my black widow on, on one, one paper, my set of Scorpio, a set of uh, Monarch pencils and their dark skin tones. Then I have my polychromoses. I have my Sucolor on two pages because 180 I put them. You know that I prefer my homemade swatches because when I do them, when I uh, write numbers, when I write names, I memorize them better. I usually put them in the same order, all my sets, starting from yellow, orange, red, uh, peach, uh, uh, skin tones, then green, blue. So I love to sort them myself and to do my own, not printed swatch cards and I do them on plain paper again to be better able to get what will be result on the regular uh, color book paper. So I have Star Joy, 
here I have Arteza. Here I put Arteza pastels and castle art um, pastel set. Um, I think that they are totally similar in color, but castle art I love a little bit more. And finally, I did swatch of my two new sets, which I was gifted. Um, I got Artix here. And here in the end I have Star Joy Gold. That's my old swatch of Kohinoor pencils, Mondelus and Polycolor together. Here I have a Mondelus portrait set, but uh, with water. Here I have them dry. And finally, Darwin drawings. When I got these two new sets of uh, Star Joy Gold and Artix, I realized that my old folder just can't keep them together, so I put them into the new one. And now I try to test Star Joy Gold and Artix better um, to get some opinion about them. I did a couple of pictures here, mostly in Majestic Mouse, this one with Artix, um, this one with Star Joy. Well, I can say that um, they are just much better than Prisma colors. All that hype that Arctic pencils are like new substitute to Prisma colors for me definitely not. But as a budget pencils, which I sometimes can use to spare my more precious pencils, Polychromos Prisma colors, especially when I do simple plain backgrounds and I need to cover a big area, I definitely can use these budget pencils, but for me they are definitely far from being equal to Prisma colors. But I continue to test them in different books, in different papers, and when I will be ready, we will return to the same and we will talk about them. Well, these Star Joys, they have um, quite strange names. I definitely don't like their names. And I was slightly disappointed that um, they lost some of the nice dark colors which were available in previous set. Some of their dark, especially dark green, uh, those terra verde. Um, so I think that dark colors were more interesting in previous set. Here we have much bigger amount of pastel colors. They are nice um, and if that's your only set, that could be quite helpful. But as I already have several sets of pastel uh, colors, I can say that for me it's a big advantage. I really prefer sets where we also have nice and deep rich dark colors. And here I definitely feel a lack of dark blue colors, for example, uh, so I can't use them by themselves. I usually use this set only together with other brands, so like secondary colors. But it's interesting and as I said, I just started to test them, so I'm not ready to share my final opinion. Oh, and in the end I have that my, my swatch of my color pencils, I decided to keep it on the original swatch card, which I got together with the set, because I totally wasn't able to do um, 300 colors by my own. So, color I keep on the original swatch card, and I like it because it has nice uh, card stock without texture, so a quite nice representation of the colors. And when I reorganized my swatches, I also reorganized my pencils. Here I have finally my Star Joy Goals. You can see that only part of them, because some of them are currently in work, and my pencils in work I keep in individual pencil case. So here I have my Star Joys. I was lucky to have still some spare space here. It's it's my old pencil case where I kept my Kohinoor. So in the end I put my Artix pencils. And finally I reorganized my Kalur pencils. I 
enjoyed their box. It was beautiful, but it was so um, difficult to use them directly from their pencil trays, from the box. Uh, first, when I searched for the necessary pencils, I had to put all those trays on the floor, so the whole room floor was covered by those, I don't remember, 10 pencil trays. But the most difficult thing was um, when I need to put them back after I finished the page. Um, here I actually enjoyed this swatch. We have there, them in numerical order from 1 until 300. Usually I don't use numbers. But here numbers also created quite good family families of colors. So more or less logical, we can clearly see those pink reds, then yellow orange, so it was possible to work. On trays they were in different order, so it was impossible to find them first and then to put them back on their place. So I reorganized them in a pencil case and I hope that it will help me to start using them more frequently. And in this box, in this huge pencil case, I also put them from, no, not this side. From first until the last. Uh, that's my old box. Uh, I think that I purchased it a couple of years ago and I was thinking about putting here my duplicates, my uh, uh, most favorite polychromos pencils where I have uh, double colors. But now I decided that I can put here my colors. It wasn't enough for the full set, it's smaller, but as I don't use their neon fluorescent colors, I simply put them aside, I won't be using them. I put here only metals, I have them here, all their metal colors, and then the rest uh, was uh, matched into this pencil case quite well. Now I hope that I will use them and I will also will try to find paper in the books where they will behave better. My first test wasn't very successful. I think that I used them in mythographic and somewhere in Tatiana Bagema. In Bagema books you know that paper is bad and in mythographic paper was too smooth. I think that for blending, for layering Maybe they require more toothy paper. Uh, in mythographic I was able to use only a couple of layers and then they felt totally waxy, wasn't possible to put any additional colors, so uh, I wasn't very pleased how they behaved. Uh, then I put them aside because it was uncomfortable to use them from box. Now when I finally have them in order I hope that at least something I will try to color with them, because colors are nice. Uh, again, nothing very special. That's all Chinese pencils, Star Joy, Kalur, Artix, but some of the pictures which are more simple, with more simple backgrounds, you definitely can use these pencils together with more professional. I usually prefer use Chinese budget pencils for backgrounds and then on the main image I work with my lovely sets of Prisma colors and polychromoses. So I spent some time on rearranging my pencils. Now they are in beautiful order and I can uh, switch between all my pencil brands more frequently because yeah, I stick to Prisma colors and polychromoses, but sometimes I feel that I start to repeat the same favorite color combos and by switching between brands I hope that my pictures will look more fresh with more interesting, more new color combos. Next thing which I had purchased is this <laughs> unusual brushes. You know that many colors use distress inks and distress oxides to create interesting beautiful backgrounds. And I remembered that 10 or 12 years ago I was 
uh, interested in scrapbooking and card making. So I have some very old, 12 year old uh, distress inks. Some of them are already totally dried, some of them are still workable, still have some ink. I was terrible at card making and scrapbooking. Uh, my works, they looked like three year old, did something in kindergarten, that was my level. Believe me, I know that in coloring I am quite on good level. In card making, well, that was totally unsatisfying, so I dropped it pretty quickly. I realized that first I didn't know where to get all my cards, no one was interested in handmade cards uh, among my friends when they received they looked at me a little bit strange like you're back to kindergarten back to school so it's not very popular thing handmade cards here and then my life changed I was busy so I dropped my scrapbooking hobby then coloring was my main hobby I discovered coloring, but I still have some art supplies which I can use, but I realized that I need something to put them on paper. So I purchased this set of tiny, tiny brushes. I suppose that originally uh, Chinese manufacturers uh, suppose them as some makeup brushes, but they are also quite helpful for such things. I discovered to try to test them because I don't know what I need to create backgrounds with those inks. I usually use them for stamping for, to do backgrounds. It's a totally new thing for me, but I saw many lovely works and I also want to try myself. So I have three brushes in different sizes. They are so soft, very pleasant to touch. And those bigger set of brushes. Sorry for the noise, but I want to show you at least one of them. Also quite, quite soft, so I hope that it will be possible to spread ink from my distress inks on the background. I really love to do uh, pictures like I have portraits here or portraits here. I think that such pictures, they require a very light pastel background. I imagine here, for example, maybe light blue, light green, light pink, very light by itself and to do gradient a little bit more intense closer to the image and then paler uh, around the main image. And with pencils I know that I won't be able to do it. I just don't have enough patience to sit and to do this light pastel gradients. Soft pastel, well, that's not my favorite media. I usually uh, think that it creates some stains. So soft pastel, well, not everywhere I can use it. And that was the reason why I hadn't colored many portraits here, because I simply don't know how to do the background. I can't use watercolor here. Um, I think that acrylic is too intense and doesn't match the style of these beautiful and very delicate portraits. So I needed something delicate, transparent and easy. That's why I decided to use Distress Inks. And now when I have my tools, I can recuperate my very old inks and I hope that at least a couple of colors will still have ink and I will be able to use them somewhere. Next, let's talk about crayons. I have a friend who currently is very interested in card making and she gave me these sets of crayons. She purchased it for herself and I know that she expected them to work as neo colors. She loved my neo colors and she wanted something similar. I don't know uh, anything about this brand. I think that it's uh, King Art. 
But when she gave them to me, she said a lot of bad words. She was totally disappointed because they didn't want to dissolve on the paper. So she was able to throw them away. And I said, that, okay, gave them to, give them to me. I will test them. Maybe I will find a way how to use them in coloring books. Because colors are very beautiful, so very lovely. Well, I also did my swatch. Here you can see that color palette is quite nice, but indeed, when I started to apply water, when I use them uh, just like I use my neo colors, first putting them on paper and then trying to apply water, they were only half dissolved. So you can clearly see the first trace and then only some halo of color around. Definitely not the best thing, so I understand why my friend was so disappointed. She tried to purchase herself new colors and to be happy. But I really liked how they behave by themselves. They feel like very creamy lipstick. All right, let me somehow open it. So there are those crayons. They have this color pigment here. Very soft, very creamy, indeed very similar to the lipstick. So uh, by themselves on paper they were quite okay, very soft and I love them, but I just don't know how <laughs> to use them. <laughs> when I spread them with fingers, yes, yeah, that can be used, but still uh, they also don't blend together very well. So I'm a little bit confused. Beautiful product, but I don't know how to use them. The only thing I mentioned, maybe I will put a little bit of this pigment on plastic or um, uh, glass palette and I will try to put pigment not from the, um, not just put pigment on the paper and then to apply water. Maybe I can use them um, just like taking pigment with my wet brush from the crayon or from the palette. Maybe in such way they will be somehow useful. If you have experience with this King Art Mixed Media Gel Sticks, I will be very happy to hear your opinion. I saw some nice videos, but paper use them for card stock, for card making. They use them on top of, uh, how to say it, some stencils. Together with stencils, yeah, you can use them. But as something as a substitute of neo colors well at least for now i don't know how to use them but i love this color so i hope that if i take pigment from crayon i somehow will be able to use these beautiful things well <laughs> again a lot of things to experiment but well first experience i wasn't very pleasant When my friend shared with me her problems with those King Art crayons, I shared with her my problem with crayons by distress, by Ranger distress. For my last birthday I received this gift, beautiful sets of distress crayons. Here you can see that colors are beautiful. But when I started to use them, again, exactly like I use Neo colors. First you put it on paper and then you add water. They also uh, didn't want to be dissolved. The problem was exactly with the previous crayons. You can clearly see initial trace, initial crayon strokes and only a little bit of color can be spreaded when you use a wet brush. So my background looked terrible. I hoped that these two beautiful grayish green colors would create nice background, but in the end I had to save it with paint. Uh, so I was slightly disappointed, but now <laughs> when I have two similar sets with two similar problems, maybe it's time for me to finally do this nice swatch, because I swatched them, but not on one paper, and maybe it's time to start using them somehow in different way. Again, maybe by taking pigment 
from the, from the crayon core or by putting a little bit of pigment first on the palette and then adding water there, so turn them into some kind of paint. Because again, all the tutorials I saw, they mostly are used together with stencils for the textured backgrounds. I don't know how it could be helpful for coloring books. Again, if you know how to use them, please help me and give me any anything from your experience or any good references for videos how these crayons could be used in coloring books because well for now i can't say that, say that i know how to use them i hope that because they have those more thin tip it will be quite nice to color with them uh, more intricate backgrounds where neo colors are a little bit too big but now I'm not sure. Okay, so I will do this swatch and I hope that you will be able to share with me your opinion. Now, I think that when I promised you, I definitely will try to be more active about them, not putting them on the shelf somewhere, like I will use them slightly later. I need to start experimenting maybe somewhere in some of the books they actually can be helpful because they look like beautiful media just i don't have enough skills how to use them okay so i will swatch them and it's final point of my short hobby vlog i didn't know how to unite all those parts a little bit about pencils a little bit about crayons about a little bit about everything but i hope that it was not very boring
did my swatch they are very creamy when you put them on paper but by themselves I don't think that you can use them in books because they leave some um, like grabs of pigment similar to oil pastel and the only thing you can spread them with your finger well I also can't imagine how I can use it for coloring books but colors are pleasant now water test and no 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 you can get a little bit of color but definitely nothing similar to neo colors that's definitely not the way of using them you can see that even with dark color you have a very light area of dissolved pigment and a very clear area of where crayon strokes is visible well definitely not the best thing when you do background so my idea is that as i do love this dissolved pigment i also will be putting this crayon not on the paper but somewhere on plastic palette it's a pity because i think that with the fine tip and with the shape of this crayon it would be quite nice to use it directly on paper but unfortunately test is not very satisfying every every color you can see that i simply can't dissolve it I can imagine some nice color compost like this milled lavender together with dusty concord or those interesting yellow, green, green gold colors. Oh, well, but just how to make smooth gradient from them, that's the problem. Maybe they will be like regular watercolors if I put them on the palette. So that was my slightly confusing test because again art supplies is nice but maybe not 100% for coloring books. We need to be some more inventive, more creative. If I can't them if I can't use them directly, I will try to do something else. And of course in my next videos I will share with you my next experiments. Again, if you have distress crayons, I hope that you will help me with some of your experience. Thank you and finally, I will see you in my next videos. Thank you for watching my slightly strange hobby vlog.